So I've got this impulse noise on 80 meters. You can see here on the SDR that it's very loud around three and a half megahertz. And that's because that's where the antenna is most efficient. When I zoom in, you can see a flickering effect. Don't worry about that. We can get rid of that by changing the decimation and setting it to a decimation of 16, which means that I'm essentially focusing on less spectrum, which means I'm sampling more frequently in that little area. If I zoom in even more, you can see that the noise is very, very broadband, and you can see that it is flickering a bunch. I'm going to let you hear a recording of it right here. Of course, I've captured that in AM because that's what it's uh, most present in. None of the other modulations really do it as much justice. So I need to now figure out what this noise is, what it looks like, and see if I can figure out some characteristics of it that might tell me a little bit more about what I'm dealing with. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a capture of the audio in Audacity. And what I've done is I've zoomed in on the audio quite a bit so that we can see uh, the individual little chunks of splatter. So if I zoom in really close, <clears throat> what I'm seeing is two big bursts repeating in a very predictable pattern. And so what I'm interested in is this distance right here. So burst peak to burst peak. Now, these ones are so close together that I can't really measure them, and they seem almost immeasurable when they're 0 0.001 seconds. So I'm going to focus instead on uh, these peaks here. So now as I move around, I can see from that first peak to this second cluster of peaks, the very first peak, here's the boundary where it goes from 7 to 8 uh, milliseconds. So I'm going to drag a little bit further, and I'm going to try to get an idea. Okay, so right about here, it gets to about 9 milliseconds. So what I'm seeing is this is about happening about uh, 8 and a half or 8 and a third uh, times or milliseconds between each tick. Now, that tells me something really important. That tells me the frequency. So you can calculate the period time, basically period being the time of uh, uh, duration between each of these ticks that you hear. And at eight and a third, if you do the math on that, well, that works out to 120 hertz. So to be sure, there's a cool little tool that you can use inside of Audacity uh, where you can go and you can actually create or generate a tone. So I'm going to generate a tone. I'm going to set it for 120 hertz because that's what the, uh, uh, the pattern is telling me. In fact, I'm not. I'm going to do it for 60 hertz because 60 is what our local utility here uh, in Canada uses. It's a 60 hertz cycle. So let me do that. And it really only gave me one bus on burst. So that's because I've got this highlighted. Let me, uh, let me get out of that and try this again. Generate a tone. I'm going to set it for 60. And I want a minute, and, or sorry, a second and a half. A uh, second and a half should be just fine considering how short this is. So what I'll do is I'll drag it over here and bring it into the timeline and zoom way far in. Okay. So I'm zoomed right in. Let me even go a little closer. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try match the wavelength to see if peak for peak I can get this to show what's happening. So I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can all see it. And if you look, you can see that right at this peak here of this wave, <clears throat> this is a fake wave. This is the noise that I've captured using a uh, virtual audio cable sound card so that we don't have any issues with analog to digital, digital analog kind of filtering. And so you can see right here that that matches up. But then there's this other burst right at the bottom here where this matches up. And again, and again, and again. So that tells me something. That tells me that I have a power line noise source. The power lines are bipolar, which means they've got a positive peak and a negative peak. And at the positive peak, we're getting an arc or a flash, or some kind of tick, we'll call it. Whereas at the bottom, we're seeing the same. So that tells me that when the voltage gets over a certain amount as it makes this wave, something is not able to insulate properly. So chances are what's happening is we're having a, a flash or a crackle or something local to that pole. I do see that there's two of them. 
So you can see that they come in pairs. I'm not really certain as to what would be causing that. It's very consistent that the second one is a few dB or whatever. I'm not really sure what the unit of measurement here would be. Um, it's mildly lesser. So I don't know if this is maybe another phase on that exact same pole that's doing the same, or if we have two separate incidents happening uh, in close proximity to me. So now that we know that that is what's happening and that it is happening at a rate of 120 hertz, and so you can tell it's 120 hertz because if this is the beginning of wave one, this is the end of wave one. So it's happening at two times this frequency. This is happening two times for every time it goes from here to here over the period of this. So that tells me this is happening at 120 hertz, which when we're using an incidental frequency for hydro of 60 hertz makes sense because these are the two voltage peaks. Those are the two places that we're going to see uh, some kind of arc or some kind of misbehavior. So we'll zoom out and we'll see that it's happening. Um, I do notice that occasionally we get groups of three. I don't know why, but it's at very predictable steps. So now that I know that it's power line noise, I need to pretty much come up with a strategy, figure out exactly where the source is emanating from. So what I did is I stood in my backyard, I stood in multiple spots in my yard, and waved my little Yagi around. So I've got a three element Yagi, and I pointed it around at uh, a number of different things in the neighborhood, um, stood on top of my port or my uh, patio and, and waved it around, walked around in my yard and waved it around, basically just did enough to make the neighbors wonder what I was on. So what I did is I, I tracked it down to being somewhere within about this direction. So um, I've got a little hobby farm down here. It's not mine. It's uh, one of my neighbors, obviously, uh, down on this row, this uh, this road. Um, and I've got a couple neighbors who have houses down on this road as well. So it seems as if it's coming from either this house or this house, or at least that's what it seems. So what I did is I drove out and uh, listened on the radio and listened and listened and listened and found that, yeah, it did get a little bit louder around here, but not so much so that it made me believe that it was one of these poles. So now I got to move farther in this direction. And I drove every single one of these roads up and down all day uh, trying to find what the noise might be until finally I came to the conclusion that it was something along this stretch, along Juniper Road here. And what we've got is a, there's a car wash over here. There is a, uh, a U-brew and some uh, small homes uh, and some businesses. And then there's this business park where uh, there is a, a radio shop, actually. That's where I get some of my, my supplies, my connectors and stuff, um, that does a bunch of radio and car radio installs. And then there's a, a new KFC and a paint place and a few other things uh, on their way to uh, Canadian Tire and the furniture store here. So I drove back and forth, and that's what this next video is going to show, uh, where I actually took some samples. So in the very first video you see, I'm parked right here, right where this little black dot is, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So this is where I think the issue is. Now I just need to prove it. Hello. So I'm trying to find the source of what I believe to be power line noise and not as turning out, not turning out to be as easy as I had hoped. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out what's causing it. So I'm getting a massive amount of noise. I'm just using AM mode on the uh, D710 here. Pardon the filth. Um, and just a few seconds ago, when I was about 10 feet farther, well, maybe 15 feet farther back, this thing was full scale. So you can hear there is hydro line noise in there, but there's another noise superimposed on it. So I'm at a point where there's two noise sources. You can kind of hear it here. So this is on the AM broadcast band. And note that I've only got this thing, like, a few, uh, a few volume notches, so whatever this noise is, it's incredible. But you can hear, wah, 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 and that is coming from, I believe, my pickup, my, my truck here, um, or some other noise source that is pulsing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive around a bit more. So 
I'm in Quinnell, and it's kind of the, uh, we're in the gray period of the year, where uh, we're in the middle of winter, but we've had a bit of a melt off, and now we're freezing again. So everything is gross and gray, and I'm up in a uh, frontage road along Highway 97, uh, next to a few places that have had some recent construction, and I'm wondering if they might be the cause of some of the problems. The place directly behind me is actually a radio shop. It's mo they mostly do uh, car stereo installs, but they also are a, uh, a radio dealer. So these guys would know if there was noise here, although they are likely to have things like battery chargers and stuff, as would be the tow yard right next door. So I'm gonna drive around a bit. I'm gonna point this down at the radio and we'll see what happens as I move. Oh, better let this other vehicle go by. So, pardon my focus, the, uh, my main, my main, uh, point here is to keep my eyes on the road. So if the radio goes, if the camera goes off the radio, pardon me, I'm gonna turn this back up, you can hear the ear sound. So the noise is significantly less down here. But on the AM radio, she's loud as ever. So at this point, I got out and waved my arrow antenna around. And essentially, all it told me is I need to go back to the area I was just in. When I waved the antenna around, pointed back at that area, it was the loudest. When I pointed it 90 degrees or 180 degrees off, it was the quietest. And I learned that the front to back on that thing isn't the greatest. And I had um, slightly less noise pointed at 180 degrees from it. Let's continue. So it's been a little while and I've done circles around the neighborhood for what feels like hours. And I finally got to a point where the noise, now this is on UHF airband, or VHF high I think they call it, around 300 megs. It's actually come down a little bit. But I've got to a point now where this appears to be the pool. However, when I wave the Yagi around, it is so loud. I need both hands so I don't have video of me doing that. But it is so loud around this pool, that pool, and the pool you can see down at the far end. Pretty much right where that truck's going in, that's where I was parked in the previous video. That I cannot determine which of these three poles is creating the noise. So, I'm either going to need to build some kind of uh, stepped attenuator or I'm going to need to move to ultrasonic, neither of which I have. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call in to the utility all three of these poles and hope and pray that they have the equipment uh, in order to, uh, to detect which of these poles is arcing. So the next thing for me to do is to talk to my provider, my hydro provider, about what it is they can do. Luckily enough, they've got quite a bit of documentation on their network and, and what really happens uh, as far as delivering power. Going through a document, or at least doing a couple Google searches, I found something interesting. They actually have a specific phone number that you can use if you're subject to any kind of of uh, radio or television interference. And in my case, it is significant radio interference. And so what I think I'm going to do is give them an email or probably call them Monday morning and see if they can come out and take a look. Really, other than that, there's not much that I can do. Uh, I just have to hope and pray that they're 
willing to, to deal with the issue. So thanks for taking a look at my video and hopefully it was helpful to you. I'd like it to be helpful to you because I don't want any other hams to have to deal with this kind of a problem. If you do have any issues, let me know. I'd be curious to know what, uh, what kind of experience you're having, uh, particularly those of you who are in the province of British Columbia, or at least in Canada. Send me an email. I'm at ve7wnk at ve7wnk.ca, and I'll be happy to read your email and maybe even uh, let you know some of the things that I did. And I'd love to hear your recommendations on, uh, on what you've done to find things. I know that other guys have had past success with uh, ultrasonic devices, um, higher frequency uh, Yagis that are a little less sensitive, uh, lower down to more pinpoint it. And uh, some guys use radio direction finding techniques such as stepped attenuators, like I was mentioning before. So let me know what it is you do. Let me know what works for you. And hopefully we can find out uh, the best way to quelch, squelch rather, some of these issues.